Let's dive into something kind of, well, dark this time. We're talking about the history of punishment and uh, how it reflects back on us today, which honestly is a bit unnerving when you really get into it. Yeah, no, it really is. People think it's just about consequences, right? You break the law. This is what happens. But it's so much deeper than that, like really gets to the core of how power works in a society. And to guide us through this deep dive, we're using Michel Foucault's Discipline and Punish. It's well, it's a classic for a reason. And we're going to unpack why it's still so relevant today. Foucault is brilliant. He helps us connect these dots between like, I don't know, public executions way back when and believe it or not, how we live our lives now. OK, see, now that's a connection I got to hear more about. Set the stage. Let's go back a few centuries. Mm -hmm. Imagine a town square, right? But instead of market day, it's an execution and not a quick thing. Like we're talking full on spectacle. Public punishment. That was the E event for centuries. Gruesome entertainment, basically. And what's so interesting is how theatrical it was. Foucault talks about the servant girl who murdered her mistress. They made her ride to her death in the same garbage cart she used to, well, to get rid of the body. It was messed up. Oof, that's, yeah, that's chilling. Seems barbaric to us now, obviously. But back then, totally normal. So what was the point of making it so public, so gruesome? Power, plain and simple. Public executions were all about the ruler showing everyone who's boss. It wasn't just punishment. It was a message. This is what happens to you if you step out of line. So basically keeping everyone terrified and obedient. Exactly. A far cry from how we think about punishment today, at least, you know, in theory, where it's about rehabilitation or at least getting dangerous people away from everyone else. Which makes me wonder, why did it change at all then? If public torture was that order, what happened? Did we just get nicer as a society? Well, that's part of it, sure. But Foucault argues something much bigger shifted, how power itself functions. Instead of these big, in-your-face displays of force, it became subtler, more sneaky. Like, it seeped into everyday life through what he called the disciplines. Okay, now this is getting interesting. The disciplines. Tell me more about that. Basically, you think of them as, like, the invisible strings that control how we act, often without us even noticing. Instead of just punishing the body, society starts focusing on controlling the person, you know, making them obedient through rules, schedules, always being watched. So it's like instead of these big public displays, we started regulating people's lives in a more like under the radar way. Yeah. That's uh, kind of tense when you think about it. So how did this whole discipline thing actually work in real life? Well, picture like those old photos of classrooms, you know, with the desks in perfect rows or those factory schedules from the Industrial Revolution. Everything timed to the minute. It wasn't just about efficiency. It was about teaching people a certain kind of order, right? Like controlling their behavior through pure routine. Wow. It's wild how something we think of as normal now, like who cares about a school timetable, right? It's connected to this whole deeper thing about power makes you think twice about stuff we take for granted. Exactly. And the more we look at our own lives, the more we see it, these disciplines playing out everywhere. Foucault said this wasn't just prisons or factories. This was society-wide. Schools, hospitals, even our own homes. So it went way beyond just punishing criminals then. It was like a blueprint for how to control people on a massive scale, huh? But where do prisons actually fit into this whole thing? Was it more the same or something different? That's where it gets really interesting. See, prisons were supposed to be about rehabilitation, right? Getting people yeah. back on track to be part of society again. But what Foucault argues is they actually just became another version of these disciplines, just like way more intense. Man, that's kind of a bleak way to look at it. Like mm -hmm. even with good intentions, it might actually make those power dynamics even worse. It definitely makes you question a lot about how our justice system works, that's for sure. And Foucault's ideas have really fueled this whole debate about whether prison even works, you know? Yeah. I mean, if it's actually making the problems worse instead of better, that's a huge deal. But before we get too deep into modern prisons, I want to go back to those disciplines for a sec. Like, how do they show up in our lives today, even if we've never been anywhere near a prison? See, that's the thing about Foucault. That's what's so brilliant. It's easy to see those old school examples, the factories and all that, as like a thing of the past. But he realized that these disciplines, they didn't go away. They just evolved, gotten even more widespread, more subtle, more ingrained in everything we do. OK, so give us some examples. And what are some of these modern day disciplines that we might be running into every day and not even realizing it. Okay, so we've gone from like literally putting criminals on display to this way more subtle system of control through discipline. 
But you're saying even now in the 21st century, that stuff is still all around us. Yeah. Hit me with a modern day mind blowing stuff. Oh yeah, buckle up because this is where it gets really real. Think about how much surveillance we're under now. Security cameras everywhere, our data being tracked online. It's like that Panopticon thing Foucault talked about, you know, where we could always be watched, even if no one's actually watching at that exact moment. Right, right. It's like just the feeling that someone could be watching is enough to make you, like, behave yourself, even if it's just to avoid a parking ticket. Yeah. But that's external. What about this internalized discipline stuff? How does that work? Perfect example. Social media. Think about it. We're constantly curating this online version of ourselves, trying to get those likes, that validation, and that pressure to look a certain way, to fit in. That's a powerful form of self-discipline, right? We're basically policing ourselves before anyone else even has the chance. Whoa. It's like we're all the warden and need the prisoner at the same time. We've internalized all these rules so much we don't even need someone else to enforce them. That's kind of scary when you put it that way. And it goes deeper, too. Think about how obsessed we are with tracking everything. Our productivity, how many steps we take, what we eat. Those systems, I mean, they can be useful, sure. But they also become these tools for self-discipline, you know? Pushing us to constantly be optimizing, be better. Yeah, it's like we're all stuck in this giant performance review that never ends. No wonder everyone's so stressed out all the time. So, like, if this stuff is so ingrained in everything, is there even any way to fight back? Or are we kind of screwed? Foucault thought that just being aware of it was a huge A step. Like once you understand how these systems work, how they're messing with your head, you can actually start making different choices, you know? So it's about noticing when you're being influenced and then deciding if you're cool with it or not. Exactly. Question those rules you've internalized. Maybe it means logging off social media for a bit or like not freaking out about your step count for a day. Little acts of reclaiming your own, I don't know, your own autonomy. This has been... Uh, it intense to say the least it's amazing how much foucault still applies to our lives even centuries later definitely giving me a lot of time to think about that's for sure that's what's so great about his work it's not about easy answers it's about getting you to ask the tough questions you know challenge what you think you know about the world and how it shapes you yeah no for sure i know the next time i'm about to post some perfect picture online mm. or freak out over my step count, i'm going to remember this conversation like <laughs> who am i really doing this fr there you go see a little rebellion one step at a time it's about seeing those strings and then deciding if you're going to dance or if you're going to cut them this deep dive has been anything but a walk in the park that's for sure but in a good way really get you thinking and hey sometimes just being aware of the problem is the first step to fixing it right thanks for joining us on this deep dive and until next time keep questioning keep exploring and as always keep diving deep <laughs>